Oh, it's time for class. Class is in session! Roll call! Bueller. I'm gonna be late for class. Bueller. Am I hallucinating here? Just what in the hell do you think you're doing? Late for class. You are mine now. You belong to me. Did you study for the test? No more complaining. No more Mr. Kim left to go to the bathroom. Nothing. There is no bathroom. Hello, classmates. Welcome to another episode of Middle Class Film Class. I'm your host for today, Pete. I'm to- I, I almost said Joseph. <laughs> You're Joseph? I'm Tyler. All right. Use your brain. Who are you, Joseph? <laughs> and I'm to uh to, uh Pete. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, <laughs> and I'm Joseph. All right. And today we're reviewing my episode from my selection from the Wheel of Destiny, reviewing Goodwill Hunting. On the campus. Of one of America's <laughs> leading I universities. Love that voice. There is a problem on the main hallway chalkboard. It took my colleagues and I more than two years to prove it. And I'm hoping that one of you might prove it by the end of the semester. The most gifted mind to ever enter its classrooms. Well, this is correct. Who did this? This trailer is who, who did it? cleans its floors. <laughs> <laughs> I just need the name of this guy who works in my building. Got this job. P.O. <coughs> you can call him. P.O. Parole. Meet Will Hunting. I've been looking over this rap sheet of yours. Assault. Theft. Assault. Resisting. Assault. With the judge. And he's agreed to release you. Not I'm from Boston. Really? He's agreed to, to the release you. Every week. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> For the first time in his life. Jesus. He's about to meet his match. How many shrinks you go to before me? Five. <laughs> this boy's genius is unparalleled. I need someone who can get through to him. Yeah, let's do it. I'm pumped. Let's let the healing begin. I went on a date last week. Going out again? I don't know. This girl's, you know, beautiful. She's smart. She's fun. <laughs> She's like perfect right now. I don't want to ruin that. Maybe you're perfect right now. Maybe you don't want to ruin that. Have you talked to him at all about his future? Give him time to figure out what he wants. This boy has that gift. Can you imagine if Einstein would have given that up just to get drunk with his buddies every night? Some people can never in my believe life. in themselves. I can't learn anything from you unless you want to talk about you. Until someone this music? believes in I that. know, it's, this trailer's not good. <laughs> you can do anything you want. You are bound by nothing. <laughs> You're sitting on a winning lottery ticket. I'd do anything to have what you got. And some never know how think much they would. can have. Ben. Man, what drew Jane audiences in in the 90s how much they was, can give. is much different now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Academy Award winner Robin Williams, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Stellan Skarsgård, and Minnie Driver. Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> nominated for nine Academy Awards. What? Wow. All right. Good well, old, good old Hunting. What, yeah. a, what a trailer. What a trailer, yes. You know, the existence of a mini driver implies an existence of a gigantic driver. <laughs> and I want to know who that is. What's Where, the opposite? A maxi driver. A maximum driver. <laughs> the maximum driver. A gigantic driver. <laughs> um, hey, Joseph, what's up? Hey, uh, what's up? Uh, Joe Bridges. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what's hey, up? what's up? <laughs> what are you doing right now? You want to host a podcast with me? <laughs> We're talking about Good Will Hunting. Oh, okay. I just happened to have watched that yesterday. Oh, wow. What a weird coincidence. Tyler, mm-hmm. have you seen that movie? Yes, I have. <laughs> recently? Yes, recently. Oh, cool. What is but it? it wasn't my first time watching it. But oh, yeah, okay. I, I, I watched it this morning. Yes. J- Joe Bridges says, this is the standard inner city music of the 90s trailers. <laughs> inner yeah. city. It makes it seem like it's cool and frenetic. <laughs> inner city pressure. Yeah. So Good Will Hunting. This is a from 1997. Written in direct or written by Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, the most beloved mm-hmm. Ben Affleck. This is like their first, like their coming out party to the all, Hollywood. Team. Yeah, and uh, starring Robin Williams, Matt Damon, and Ben Affleck, also <laughs> Stellan Skarsgård. Yeah, and directed by Gus Van Sant. Which that was a that was a surprising of, trivia. Yeah. that I learned. I, I was. I don't like, know if that's trivia, but <laughs> what? Well, I mean, because I thought I thought it was Matt Damon and Ben Affleck directing. I I knew they wrote the movie, but when I saw Gus Van Sant, they're what name, they call in the business double threat. Yeah, not a triple threat. Director of Psycho Two. Psycho. Oh, no, sorry, Psycho, Psycho Remake. Re- Psycho Redux. Yeah. Uh, Gus Van Sant, also director of. Let's see what else he did. That yeah. was, this was two movies before Psycho. Hmm. He did a white elephant. I think it's just uh, called elephant. Oh, it's just elephant. I thought it was white elephant. For, yeah, he no. did the Christmas game. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> and then he did. He also did Last Days, Paranoid, Paranoid Park, Paranoid Park, Milk. Yeah, Promised Land. Don't know. I haven't seen that one. 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of like lukewarm on Gus Van Sant. Um, as far as the direction of the movie goes, I mean, we'll get into it. But he was it was surprising to see his name pop up on the title credits. Yeah, it, I was surprised. I wasn't yeah. quite sure he had any anything to do with it. But mm-hmm. I mean, I'm who not, did you think directed it? Nobody. Oh, okay. Was just nobody like, directed. Yeah. It was, just, <laughs> it was like one of those. We trust you. Just make it happen. Yeah. Just do <laughs> the it. The studio's like actually Alex Garland directed. Good uh, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess Van Sant was fired from set, just like Dread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the reason why he put it on the wheel. Number one, haven't seen it in a long time. I feel like it gets a lot of a lot of love <coughs> in general when people bring it up, but not many people really talk about it, kind of bring it up. Sure. Like Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, their mainstays in Hollywood now. You know, I feel like Matt Damon has gone the, down the trajectory of people generally like him, and they think he's a good guy. He's one of the good ones, and Ben Affleck is kind of a douchebag. Who speaks fluent Spanish. Oh, interesting. He has a really cool phoenix tattoo on his back. You know what's funny is that he fle- he speaks fluent Spanish, but Jennifer Lopez does not. <laughs> Maybe that's why he has such disdain for her. <laughs> Can you imagine before he dates, like gets real serious and marries Jennifer Lopez, like he to, like taking these Spanish classes because she thinks that <laughs> he's gonna she, surprise her on their honeymoon night, <laughs> and then she and then he starts speaking you're Spanish learning, and dirty. I don't I don't understand what you're saying. Ni hi Benoit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sweet. You're learning Jennifer's language. Okay. So yeah, but I, I you know, I, it's got a really high kind of opinion. I feel like people really talk about it as this fantastic movie. What's that? Held in high regard. Yeah, exactly. Plot twist. It doesn't. And my aunt Linda had talked to me about it and she mentioned it. She goes, have you ever guys thought about putting, you know, reviewing Goodwill Hunting? I'm like, not really, but that would probably be a good one to talk about. There's a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of history behind it and whatnot. Yeah. So I had it, I've had it on my wheel list for a long time. I have this you know, running wheel list of movies to pull from. Mm -hmm. And uh, the time has come. So here we are. We're going to talk about it. Not your first time. Uh, No. Not my first time, but Joseph's virgin watch. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes. You sore? My will hunting cherry. Are you you, you sore now? Are you sore? After your first time? I guess so. Okay. You feel? I'll recover. Okay, good. (laughs) Gus Van Sant is, you know. He's not that prodigious. Well, like, yeah. I suppose. When we walked, when we watched the Psycho remake, I was uh, you already <laughs> you already got blown out by him. <laughs> I like the Psycho remake. I think it was fine. Okay, you should probably keep that to yourself. All right. Uh, <laughs> there are things called journals that you can write that stuff down in. Oh, we should get Tyler and Company. That'll be why Gus Van Sant's Psycho remake is underrated. <laughs> first to- first discussion topic. <laughs> okay, so let's let's give our initial thoughts. Tyler, you have a looks like you have a, your phone handy. You got a letterbox review going. I do. Oh, hello. Come along, won't you? As Tyler reads his own letterbox reviews. This is me, myself, and Tyler. God damn All right, let's so let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> All right, so it goes like this. I thought this movie was just okay. I think the shining stars, Robin Williams, and the cinematography. Matt Damon and Ben Affleck were caricature, caricatures of the... Go go ahead. I'm just enjoying the show. I'm just enjoying the show. Okay. (laughs) Matt Damon and Ben Affleck were caricatures of the people of Boston. (laughs) Stop laughing. Caricature. Caricature. Almost. almost You think you're hot shit because you know words. (laughs) All right. Well, you think. Well, you get the idea. Yeah. You get the gist of it. (laughs) They're they're people. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> of the people of Boston, the story was well paced, but the subject matter was too inflated with building up this character as damaged goods and being a genius. The acting of Matt Damon was very average, and the Boston accent took me out of the movie sometimes. It's a movie I could re- I, I could rewatch if it was on television. Yeah. Oh, is that it? No grade? I didn't give it a grade. You usually give it a grade again. Grade B plus. End of report. Yeah, I usually I usually do that, but I gave it. I, I but I didn't do it that this time. Well, what but is it? I, I want to hear. I want to hear now before three, we. Review. So I gave it three stars. Okay, and okay. I just like it, it's a C plus. It's a C it's plus. A, it's a C plus. There's a lot of rewatchability with this movie, and I think that I just don't like. It felt like so. This movie was written by Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. It felt like it was a movie trying to inflate Matt Damon's ego. Like, oh, you know, he I'm wasn't playing himself. He was a character. I understand that, but who wouldn't want to? <laughs> People be... will think I'm really smart if I write. If I play a, movie. a smart guy. <laughs> well, true, but that's why it, everyone thinks Russell Crowe's who, super smart. Who wouldn't want to play like an ultra genius 
And, oh, I'm from Boston. They're <laughs> from Boston. They're not playing that part. And so... <laughs> <laughs> they might, maybe what they're saying, playing the accent up a little bit, but... What I'm, what, <laughs> what I'm, what I'm saying is, though, is, like, that... <laughs> That story, that story of someone being from like a poor part of a city, but they're also a genius. I mean, I didn't, it, it, it doesn't sell it to me. Robin Williams acting really was top notch. Do you like Malcolm in the Middle? I do. But they're from, they're from, a, they're poor. Mm-hmm. They're from, and he's a genius. I don't know. I don't know if he, I wouldn't call them poor. No, they, they are, are poor. definitely they're poor. Very poor. I don't know. They I choose what bills to pay each month. Are we going to pay an electricity bill or a water bill? They still have a house though. That doesn't, they're, so, the, they're still poor Matt people Dan, who have Matt houses. Damon's character lives in a shack. <laughs> so that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just, so by that logic, you don't like Malcolm. No, I, I detest him. You're a, you're no, a fr- of course you're I love it. You're it's a Frankie, a Frankie Muniz is being attacked on this show. No, I'm not attacking him. I, anyways, that he whole... Got a, he has brain damage, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, but he's a good race car driver. That's what I was just going to say, but he's a good race car driver. But I think, I think I just... That story of, like, the rags to riches in that sort of storytelling, where the guy is the genius, like, the, the knowledge that he has of the subject matters that are presented in front of him doesn't make sense i get he probably has a photographic memory but uh-huh. i don't know he explains just, it in the movie yeah yeah it, it he just, read it in a book yeah <laughs> for a dollar 50 and uh-huh. you had to pay 150 grand yeah i don't know that i mean like good. i thought but <laughs> but regardless of that criticism the it, it's a very well-paced movie and <clears throat> i yeah i you know, I just I liked it. Like it, good, not great, but it's you good. know, it's All right. it, yeah, that's fair. Okay, cool. Uh, Is it yeah? C <laughs> C plus from Tyler, uh, three stars. Yeah. All right, Joseph. First watch. How you first like it? watch, and I've only. I mean, it's a. It's like the movie. It's like a movie that has been in the movie world, and it's like a movie of movies. You it's know, a movie of movies. Like it's Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> what does that mean? Is I don't know. It's like in the pantheon. It's a contemporary classic of yeah, I guess so. Like nineties, yeah. nineties movies that are good, like The English Patient or something like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. movie, movies that just missed me just growing yeah. up because no one in my family watched it. Mm-hmm. I honestly don't even know if my parents have seen this movie. <laughs> Fair enough. All I've heard about it is that it is classified as a good movie. And I'm at the edge of my seat right so now. So going into this with the mindset, like this is supposed to be a good movie uh. and watching it. And I was like, this is a pretty <laughs> good movie. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I was like, I already had I the was bar. at the edge of my seat. I already had the bar of like, it's supposed to be a good movie. And then I was surprised at how good it was. Oh, good. So it already it met your expectations and it made, met and then went pers- above. Went wow, above them. Oh, nice. Because me and Deanna both watched it together. And neither of us had seen this before. And I like, I went, I kind of went into the movie with that idea of Matt Damon wrote this, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck wrote this movie and he wrote, I guess his character as, as like this, I don't want to say loser, but like, (laughs) but like a guy with a lot of trauma, who's also just gifted in, in his abilities to learn subjects very quickly and retain information, right? Mm -hmm. Being very, very intelligent. But also with that, with the baggage of abuse and trauma and mm-hmm. growing up and being an orphan and growing up in foster care. Mm-hmm. So there was that little bit of, like in the beginning, I was like, I kind of had that feeling. But then it went away because I'm like, well, he's playing it. He's like you just said, he's not playing himself. I like get heightened version of himself. Like, this is the story of me. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Matt Damon and me, I was abused as a child. With, and know, I'm also a genius. He has a perfectly fine upbringing in real life. Yeah. And uh, I mean, Robin Williams, obviously, it's easy. To, it's really easy to say that he was the standout because he is he's the he, he is the antagonist in a way to Matt Damon's character. But obviously, he's not the bad guy. He's like an opposing force more than an antagonist. Like he's met his match. Yeah. Right. You know, finally met his match. <laughs> because he is <laughs> the he first is, time in his life. Because he's also a person who has his own history of different kinds of trauma. Right. And, you know, he can finally be someone who can get through to Will. And I, yeah, I really, really love this movie. It was really good. Yeah, I, nice. I thought it was from like all fronts, from all points like directing and acting and, and writing and it was it was very like 
quick witty without being like overly clever, mm. you know, especially with the ponytail and the bar. Um, <laughs> That's yeah. probably about as close to like too clever as it gets in, yeah. in that scene. Um, and there, and I was expecting like sort of like more of a, of that character to be an adversary type of character, more of an antagonist mm-hmm. to be like, come back and get revenge or something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But it never happens. And <clears> I'm, I mean, I, I'm glad it didn't happen because this is, it's not really that kind of movie. Right. And Casey Affleck, a very young Casey Affleck also being in the movie was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, did, it, did you see that he kind of looked like Chalamet now? I knew, I, I, was, I was watching thinking him, that. I'm like, I recognize that little twink. Oh, just the little, like, <laughs> the, the hair. Yeah, it just, uh, even when he's well, in the backseat, in, fa- in the facial structure, too. Got like a it's bewildered just, look on his face all the time. Yeah. Like he's like a wide-eyed doe. Yeah. Mm, you know. No, I noticed that as well. But, but yeah, like, when, when he finally gets through to him, in that uh, that pinnacle scene, it's not your fault. Very emotional. Um, yeah, it's good. And his breakdown with uh, Mini Driver's character, like in their in her dorm room or whatever. And he's like, "You think this is a? You think this was a like a accident here? You think this was surgery I got? Yeah. Like the uh, that like was a good scene. His explosive sort of reaction to uh, that whole conversation was also really good. Um, She's great in that scene too. Yeah, yeah. Her yeah. Breakdown. But yeah, it's. I mean, it's from. Beginning to end, it's just a really solid movie. And I was like, for a movie that has been touted as this is a good movie, I was still surprised at how good it was. So, yeah. <laughs> why is that funny? <laughs> I don't go ahead. Sorry. No, no explain. I, explain. I, I want to know. I want to know too. <laughs> no. Why you ch- chuckle? For, right? for, <laughs> for a movie that's touted as a good movie, I was surprised that it was a good movie. I don't know why that made me laugh. <laughs> well, because a lot of times you could watch like a classic and people are like, Go watch this movie. It's great. And you watch it and you go, oh, it's all right. It's fine. Yeah. It didn't leave up to the expectation. Yeah. I'm glad that it did, it did for you, to be honest, because I, I enjoy this movie quite a bit also. You know, I'm surprised that you I, you enjoyed this movie as much as... Who, Joseph you, or me? No, Joseph. Why? I don't know. Like, I when I was watching it, I was thinking about... I was thinking about you, <laughs> and I was thinking... Oh man, I don't know. I don't know if he's gonna like this movie or not. <laughs> why? Well, I don't know why because you have a very specific taste in movies, and so I was thinking to myself, "Yeah, well, Goodwill Hunting is uh, regarded as a good movie, so he's. I, kinda... I bet he's gonna rip it apart, and I can't wait to hear." That's what it. we think about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying that Joseph is a contrarian? No, no, not at all. It just I I just don't think he has good taste in movies at all. That's not true at all. That is not true at all. That how dare you say that? That's not true. But yeah, performances for everybody really good. Ben Affleck wasn't not in the movie as much as I thought he was going to be. Um, yeah, but he was kind of he was a little bit of a comedic relief, but he has a good part in the whole story in being his friend. See, you know, I wish, you know, the the happiest ten seconds of my day is, you know, and then it comes around yeah it's a great line great payoff yeah um yeah really 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 good nice okay great awesome all right uh, i just realized we've just been over here yeah it's fine you can leave it on okay yeah so i've probably seen this movie three four times maybe something like that Mm -hmm. i don't remember the first time watching it it kind of was like to joseph's point one of the movies that was always just there Uh, i don't remember a time not knowing about goodwill hunting it was just i mean 97 i would have been 11 when it came out was it just like on cable television or something like that? And Pro- you just probably, pro- yeah. yeah, probably because it seems like a good cable TV TBS movie. or something, yeah, you know, with with commercials. And there was a number of scenes that I when I watched it this time, I'm like, I don't remember this scene at all. Mm-hmm. Ben Affleck in the boardroom trying to get three hundred bucks out of the guys. I didn't yeah. remember that scene either. I don't remember that scene. <laughs> I don't remember what was the other scene. I don't remember. I don't remember the part where Casey Affleck's jerking off at. Ben Affleck's house and his was, mom's bedroom. his mom's bedroom because that's the only place they have a VCR. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> that was, <laughs> I could have sworn that whole scene right there was the same <clears throat> dining room as as Aunt May's and Spider Man. Same room as Spider Man. <laughs> oh, funny. I have a theory that Gus Van Sant watched this. Yeah, that's smart. Let me put it this way: Have you ever heard of Plato, Aristotle, Socrates? Yes. Morons. Really. I think that he saw that scene in Princess Bride and then said, I'm going to write a character like that who makes yeah. Aristotle, Plato, Socrates look like morons. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because there's a scene when Stellan Skarsgård is talking to Robin Williams' character and he's like, you know, 
they, we found this mystic man. And, yeah. and it wasn't, it wasn't, you know. Oh, the, is that when they were at the bar? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And he's talking about like theater, theoretical physics or something. And he's like, you know, people have been studying that for decades. You know, mm-hmm. they're learned men with the advanced degrees and they were trying to crack the nut on this, you know, advanced theories. And it wasn't them. It was some guy in a cave in India who picked up a book and said, right. yeah. had an epiphany because his brain just worked better than all of them. Yeah. He took that pill from Limitless and was like, now <laughs> he, he changed the course of, you know, mathematics for the rest of our lives. And he goes, he's that important. Yeah. And I really liked, I really liked that, that scene too, that fall, uh, immediately follows that. He calls the bartender over and asks him, who, if he knows who Einstein is, yeah, he knows who who's the other one. Oh, I can't. The remember. professor. Yeah, he, no, no. He says his own that, name. No, before it? that though, he has some two names. It was like it was like Louis Pasteur or something like that. It, it was it was something like it started with an R, but <laughs> Reggie Watts. It was yeah. Do you know? <laughs> do you know who Reggie Watts you know who, is? Yeah, you know. Do you know who? Uh, it's a genius. <laughs> yeah. Do you know who? Uh, what's her name is? Anyways, he asked him about the two like science people. And yeah. He goes, yeah, I know who it is. Oh, do you know it's Lambo, Professor? You know, who, you know, Gust, Gustavo Lambo is or whatever. And he goes, no, I don't. And I, the payoff when he goes back to the guy, he goes, hey, you know, you know, who Lambo is. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's just the, all the little bits of the writing in this really work well. There's a lot of setups and payoffs, right? And I think it's interesting that Matt Damon was in Harvard. He, he was smart, and he, in his fifth <laughs> year of Harvard, he had to a playwright class and he had to write a one act play that eventually him and Matt Damon hooked up with, or him and Ben Affleck hooked up with, and they wrote what would have become this play, or this, uh, this movie. Mm. So it started out in Harvard. As a class assignment. As a, as a assignment. Yeah, wow. which where a lot of like big name <clears throat> filmmakers come from. You know, Spielberg wasn't one of them. He went back to school and w- turned in, like, no, it was George Lucas, I think. He turned in like uh, American Graffiti as his thesis mm. to, yeah. the, <laughs> to the film school, and like LA, some LA film school, but... A lot of people come out of film school and they have this one project and it's, holy shit, that could be a great, that short could be a great movie and then it turns into something yeah, else. It cascades into <clears> something, yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, he, it, it, you know, they got hooked up with Harvey Weinstein early on and that's, uh, that's yeah. well, a lot of the production company. Yeah. So anyways, I, yeah, I thought it was really, really fantastic on a rewatch. I think some of the cracks show of early it's not, I don't want to, I, at first I was thinking it was like the early low, kind of low production, low budget production. Mm-hmm. Some of the editing in like the slow, the slow motion fight scene where they're clearly moving slow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, uh, but, yeah that's that, good. I mean, that's in a different type of movie too. I know. This is a drama. <laughs> yeah. This is like, when I was watching this, I was like, this is like Manchester by the Sea before, uh-huh. before <laughs> Manchester by the Sea. <laughs> well, I like that. I like that scene. I liked what it says about the characters and it, it. It really paints you because when like what we think of Matt Damon now, and if you were to just see that guy on the street, I don't think he looks like a tough. Ben right. Affleck's character looks like a tough. Yeah, he has he the looks, track suit and everything. Yeah, but straight out of GTA Four. But I don't think <laughs> that when I see Will Hunting, when I see Will Hunting, I think of just some guy, a fucking guy, he's just some yeah, he's fucking just, he's guy. Just some guy, some huge freaking guy. Yeah, huge. And, yeah, he 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 was working out a lot. That was that was a quote from Boondock Saints. I don't think he was particularly huge in this. He's pretty good shape for a young man, I guess, but... I don't know. He's I Boston thought. strong. <laughs> yeah. He's Boston <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, my God. All right, now we've talked about the Boston Marathon bombings on this show. <laughs> it's a good change of pace from the usual 9-11 talk. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I don't... I, I like that scene, but the, the way they edited it with the, slow, the fake slow motion was really cringy. Yeah. I didn't like that. I would have liked it Which if I'll, it was just I'll like say, in real time. I would have. I think that would have been more effective. That's literally exactly what I'm saying. No. And I'm, what I'm going to say is I don't think it was a, a problem with the script or problem. It was Gus, fucking Gus Van Sant. No, no, no. Every, we shoot it in 24 and you just act like it's slow. Yeah. Every, every, <laughs> everything I see about Gus Van Sant. This accents you guys are trying are a thing. They're a thing? Oh, sweet. Is this the thing? Our thing? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the... Just the the decision to do it like that and leave it in the movie, I thought it was uh, it could've, they could have. I don't know. I didn't like. Let's that. Let's beat up these guys who harass these women. I'm cool with that part. Yeah, I just yeah. don't like the way it was shot. And then there was a number of like, editing kind of gaffes where the lips don't match up with. Like, they're doing like a, a J cut or something, and they, mm-hmm. but it's the person talking is still in the background. I don't know. It's it was a little bit of stuff there. So I I wouldn't call this a perfect movie, but fuck, it's a great script. Yeah, and the back and forth between the first time that Will Hunting meets Sean, the therapist. Yeah, yeah. Robin, Robin Williams, Williams character. Sean. 
Yeah. John. The first time they have that interaction when he goes ape on him and he says, don't ever fucking talk about my <laughs> wife. I wasn't not expecting that to happen. That was great. <laughs> that was a really I great knew it was scene. coming and it still shocked me. Is that what therapy's like? Yeah, yeah. They just hold you by your throat. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I've been strangled many times in <laughs> sessions. So I, I, I like, and I also think it's funny how Sean's, he admits to not being a good therapist. He's like, I know how to teach it. I didn't say I was good at it at, right. one, at one point. Because his entire like m- methodology, like the greater understanding of it, of the psyche of, of Will Hunting, I think is is admirable. And he, under- he really does get the kid. Yeah. But most of the conversation that he has with him is, you know, he just asked the same question. He goes, you read all these books? He goes, yeah. You read, like, you read books? Yeah, I read books. You read any of these books? Yeah. Okay. You're just literally just taking the same question that he asked and asking him back to him, <laughs> which I think is kind of the point, but yeah, it, he wasn't a particularly great therapist on a micro level, like the actual actions of it. Yeah. But I think this understanding of his patient was, was pretty good. And uh, yeah, really good. Like, yeah. like liked it a lot. I think, I, th- I think it's, it, I think he recognized he knew what kind of person this will hunting was. And so he knew, so yeah, you know, he probably wasn't a good therapist by any means, but he, he like, he found a patient that he could understand because they came from the same neighborhood. So he knows the, the culture of that neighborhood and the attitude that people portray. And so I think that's what, I think that's what made him come back to keep doing therapy on Will Hunting. And also he was, that it was mandated. Court mandated too. Oh, it was also <laughs> court mandated too. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot that small detail. But I think Robin Williams definitely was like the standout e- in this easy, movie. Yeah, easily. Is, but again, at the same time, like Stella in the Scars Guard is Dune Hark or the D- Baron. D- Duke Har- Baron Harkonnen. He's the big fat guy from Dune. <laughs> yeah. And and he's also from Chernobyl. Oh, I haven't seen it. Oh. He's also in Thor. Uh, he's in Thor. You haven't seen Chernobyl, Pete? Come no, on. The, <clears throat> no. Spot, no, the the girl with the tattoo. Girl with the dragon tattoo. Oh, the yeah. girl with the dragon tattoo. <laughs> she's in the girl yeah. with the tattoo. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I thought and I, I thought the math teacher he he's just a pain in the ass. Like he wants to take he He's coming from a good place to direct Will into a world where he could have extreme privilege. Well, let me ask you the question that they, Sean and, and the professor wrestle with throughout basically the last half of the movie, the last mm-hmm. act, I should say. You read books? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I don't know how to read. Oh, okay. Tracks. Yeah. <laughs> um, Use your brain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how. That's actually the the uh, Stellan Skarsgård to Bill Hunting. He's like, use your brain. <laughs> use your brain. Use your brain. Okay, the thing we get in your head, Use it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the question is, if you have this untapped resource, this diamond in the rough, this yeah. a- absolute talent, this brain that works unlike anybody else, and could potentially change the course of the our world forever a la einstein or louis right. pest or whoever these people are yeah is it is it worth pushing him past his own comfort level and basically saying you you don't understand it you owe it to the world to kind of get him to that level because sean yeah. sean says no the therapist says no he's like let let the boy do whatever he wants and yeah the professor is saying you ha- we owe it to the world to push him there yeah, I I'm I'm in agreement with Sean on this because Sean. <laughs> yeah, Jason because uh, as a as a human being because you when he's talking about all the great scientists and mathematicians they wanted to do that. They weren't pushed to do that. They wanted it. So, I think Sean's correct in saying no. If he wants to do it, he's going to do it. If he doesn't want to do it. Don't make him do it. Yeah. Don't make him do it. Well, they turn into his parents, basically. Where, well, where it's like one parent's. It's like, no, he has to. He has to play in marching band. <laughs> I, I don't want to play in marching band. I think there's I think there's limits that they that <laughs> will needed to have, which they did. I mean, obviously, it was court mandated, so it was like legal limits. But um, I think he needed he needed a emotional structure based on because he was an orphan uh he lives in a shack uh, was he, it a was, shack or it was just a building it just looked like a shitty apartment 
Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just saying it looked like a shack. <laughs> yeah, it was probably... Trust me, I know shacks. <laughs> it was just probably... Real shack expert over here. Yeah, yeah. real Kazam situation. Probably, probably <laughs> just a, like a, a studio wooden shack. But anyway. Looks like the halfway house that Brooks went to and killed himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Will hunting was here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, I think I th- I th- I believe that. I'm asking you personally. What would you What do you think? You said no. No, I don't think, push him. No, Joseph. What about you? I mean, you should let him have autonomy over his life. <laughs> he should have free agency. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm not saying to slave him out or anything, but you know, <laughs> well, he was. I mean, the professor was in a sense, trying to exploit him, but at the same time, he didn't get really anything out of it other than because he was like, nobody knows who I am, yeah. but somebody could know who this kid is and he could do go on to do great things. So it does come from a good place, yeah. but at the same time, you can't be like, you have to do this and without him also wanting to do it. Sure. Yeah, I came down somewhere in the middle because part of me thinks... You know that's the role of a parent is you're supposed to go. You a, a kid encourage. would, a kid would, yeah, a, cur, a kid would rather, but you have to force them sometimes as a child because a kid would yeah. rather just eat ice cream and candy all day. It's yeah. like you have to eat your fucking vegetables. Mm-hmm. You have to eat your, you know, veggies and your fruits and stuff. And no, you can't have another McFlurry. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's three today. Yeah, <laughs> our cap you is can't two. just eat Uncrustables and sour Skittles. Okay. I know. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Two Slurpees? The first one gave you a stomach ache. Why'd you drink the second one? Tai Tai? I thought good. it would be different. It yeah. tastes good. <laughs> so, I mean, at some point as a parent, you do have to force that onto a child. And in, in Will Hunting's case, he never had a parent, you know? Yeah, he didn't the, really have like that The parental figure he had was, you know, someone basically taking a, ha- a, a wrench to him yeah. and putting cigarettes out on him, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I, I, again, I'm not saying force him to do the thing, but... It's the Terrence Fletcher from Whiplash scenario, which mm. in that conversation, when the two of them are arguing about it, I looked at Brianna, I said, oh, that's two people that just got done watching Whiplash arguing about who's the hero and who's the villain. Because <laughs> it's like you, is it okay to push people past their physical limit or whatever to get greatness? Well, I mean, I think the difference between Goodwill Hunting and Whiplash is that in Whiplash, there's no therapy. He, he well, <laughs> Miles Teller's. I think the real villain of Whiplash is Paul Reiser. <laughs> I'm I'm not joking. <laughs> Fuck that dad. Well, he, yeah, he's he, he, complacent. But he, he's, he's just. It's okay. You can give up. But yeah, he just give up. Here's some uh, some gush gushers. I could put gushers <laughs> in the pantry for <laughs> you. Some raisinets in the popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I like he, to eat around him. He wants. So it, it's the it's the pursuit of wanting to do greatness. And so with Will, the pursuit of wanting to do greatness. Yes. Yeah, yeah, pursuit of wanting to do great. Who's pursuing the who, want? Who, who's pursuing the want? The, 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 well, I was talking about the main character in Whiplash. He wanted to do the pursuit great, of greatness. The pursuit of he greatness. He already wants the greatness. He doesn't have to okay. pursue that anymore. All right. Well, fine. The, the pursuit <laughs> of greatness. But uh, I think Will, what he wants, regardless of his intelligence, he just wants to find a stable life. And I think Ben Affleck's character was kind of messed up for him to say, I always wish that you wouldn't be here because you, because I would do anything to have what you have. He's got a and, point though. I mean, I get, I get the point, but at the same time, he, Matt Damon's, Will Hunting needs his own free agency. So if he wants to work on a construction job and like date a hot doc, British doctor student, like, why, I like, mean, why? it's kind of like, like that's it. That's 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 what he wants to do. Date and then break up with the best thing that's ever happened to him, just because he's because he's a self sabotager. It's kind of yeah. the same logic we put on billionaires. Like they have all this money, they could solve a lot of problems, yet they don't. Yeah. Well, I agree. Push them out of the comfort a, zone. They have a responsibility. You do have a responsibility. I don't. I don't see. But that's not fair, though. That's not. That's not fair for Will because he he doesn't he doesn't owe the world. But that, if you were born, if you were born into money and you had billions inherited to you, don't you think you have a little bit of a moral obligation to give back to the world? Well, that's a little bit of a different discussion because no, it's not. I, if uh, yes, no, it it's is because if you're born super smart, you got to do <laughs> smart shit, dude. I, I, th- 
<laughs> if I was born super smart, I would just I would just do what I want to do. But if I was born into like billions of if I inherited billions of dollars, like if we're talking billions, yeah. like I'd probably give it most away. Not about that. I doubt that. No, I would because I I, I don't I don't give a shit about money. It would, so, go, it would all go up your nose. <laughs> or intelligence, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, but really, what's the difference if you have this natural gift? If you, if, so say, for example, in a different example. Okay. Will Hunting's example. Yeah. He got Mozart or Bach or somebody who just sees the piano and gets it. Oh, I they love They understand that. it, right? Yeah. And it's like, you got Wolfie from Amadeus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who could just do it. And he's like, that was pretty good, but how about my version? And he can, it's like, if you, if you have a child and you sit him down at the piano, you never give him lessons and all of a sudden he busts something like that out. Don't you think mm-hmm. it's a little bit of an obligation to say, nurture that and promote that and kind of push them into the to the limits of saying, maybe not dedicate your entire life to it, but you should be using this. It's like I, it's like it's like putting a, a cover on top of a beautiful light. I would pr- I, I I would encourage shine and, your light, boy. I would encourage and promote <laughs> it, but I would all <laughs> but I would also promote them doing what they want as long as it's piano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I you have this. Great I mean, gift, and you're gonna and people around him are like you're gonna squander that by staying yeah. here. Are you gonna stay a construction worker? Or you think gonna- it's funny? You have this great th- gift, and you're not using it. You think it's funny? You know, people are gonna be people. But like, at the same time, a- you could be really good at whatever job. You could be really good at I don't know fixing cars. But I hate fixing cars. Sure. Yeah. So that, that I mean that's that that's my that's my point. I'm though. Okay, and I'm okay. And, with, I agree. I I accept that sentiment. But he hasn't even tried. This is the problem. Yeah. Well, he and he, but he's also a kid too. So yeah, so that so that's what I really <laughs> like about this movie. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I like about this movie though is because there's like this there's this point where like you're you're agreeing with the math professor, and then you're also agreeing with Sean because you want someone to have their own free agency. Yet having this incredible amount of intelligence where he's like solving math problem or proofing is it proofing math problems that math it took proofs. Me, math, yeah, he's math, solving math proof. Yeah, he's solving math proofs that took years for these people to solve and he's doing it in one goddamn sitting. I like the scene um, when he lights the proof on fire and he's the professor keeps kind of trying to poke holes in it. He goes, Well, what about this? No, that's right. Yeah. Well, have you thought about it? It's right. Yeah, just he, just take it home. Just read it. It's right. It's yeah, right. And you, then you guys how fucking easy this is for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a fucking joke. I really i I love that level of confidence in Will Hunting's character too. Is like when he because he just he does it with impunity. Like he just doesn't even care. He's like, yep, they're numbers, triangles, and you what, think Will is his middle name? His first name is actually good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, why is it called? His name is Good? <laughs> Mr. Good Hunting? I, <laughs> Mr. Good Hunting. I shouldn't like the name because it seems so dumb. It's like, you know, um, you know, Swift Justice. You know, the it's a detective living on the edge, doing the last job. His name is Terrence Swift. <laughs> and you're like, okay, don't put the character's name in the title. It's kind of lame. Yeah. But it works. I mean, it, do, it, do, it does work because... Yeah, his name is Will Hunting, but... Wait a second. His name is Will Hunting? Well, yeah. Where, where's yeah, my, where's my drop here? I, I like... But the reason why I like... I, I And I think this was a like a genius part on whoever created the title. Because oh, it says... Now we're good, 10 minutes on the title. Great. I opened fucking Pandora's box. <laughs> <laughs> because it says Good Will Hunting. And that... <laughs> that could, I don't know that, 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 that could That could be like a metaphor... Like in some way, because it's like finding good. I thought will, about. I thought like it was about finding, thrift stores. Finding hunting, like hunting for good, <laughs> hunting for goodwill. All right, you know, all right, I, I don't hurt yourself, Tyler. No, that, it's that, okay. that, I'm not right. It's that, you see, it's that, it's, it's like the Costanza <laughs> manure joke. Where he's like, you got the ma and the newer. You got ma, which is good, and newer also good. Manure, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the good, which is good, obviously, and then you got Will Hunting, which is the character's name, and then you put them together. He is good, Will Hunting. <laughs> See, it all makes sense. 
No, I, I'm putting. I'm, <laughs> you pick it up when I put it down. Yeah, it, it's, yes, it's, I, it's good. I like it. <laughs> yes, I understand, but I, I, I think, I think it's, a, I think it's a great name. I th- <laughs> are we, are we, are we, are we giving our opinion on the title of the movie? Yeah, uh, I want to <laughs> talk about well, yes. a couple things. First, in movies where a character is super smart mm-hmm. yeah. and they're doing like equations and stuff on the board, I'm like, must be right. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. He I says it's right. I guess it's right. I was thinking. I was thinking the I like same. When they're doing the cross out thing. You're crossing this out and crossing yeah. that out together. I'm like, ah, yeah, I remember that parabolas and stuff. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, have, K I, over T equals mm. the square root of seven S. Y equals mx plus b. And some mm. and somehow there's possibly a, and somehow we have to put a triangle in there. I don't. Yeah, know. you got to you got to put the curve on the graph, and then yeah. you got your Pythagorean theorem. Well, when they had when they had the lines with the dots, like the branching. Oh yeah, lines. I'm like, what the fuck part of math is this? <laughs> I know. Yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> it really did not. Do we need this? <laughs> I know. Who's you know, using this? That's that's exactly what I was thinking when I was watching like all the like the math equations. I'm just like, what? To, to what end? You know, where, what happened to good old plus and minus? <laughs> yeah. To what end? <laughs> I wonder if we would have Interstellar without this movie. The amount oh. of the amount of equations in this movie because the whole Interstellar is like, you have to solve the equation. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway. uh, I, I I got it. I guess I, if we didn't have math, we wouldn't have anything. <laughs> well, that's true. That's you know true. what? That's that's a great point. Uh, <laughs> I'd be dead right now. Uh, uh, it would be dead. The other thing I want to talk about is when he's going through the therapists, the different therapists before he ends up on oh, Sean. Yeah. Uh, the first one he goes to, John. I like, I like that guy. Where he's he's like, is, does anybody else know you're gay? Yeah, no, is it is it extremely hard going through life pretending you're not gay? And <laughs> I want to talk about why it reminded me of Tyler. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. The therapist, when he accuses him, not accuses him, when he calls him out, basically, uh-huh. he outs him. Yeah. Very, very disrespectful. By the yeah, way. really. He, the therapist's reaction, it, re- <laughs> it reminded what? me of if we were to accuse Tyler of something, yeah. which we often do. Yeah. And that was like, this, this is exactly what Tyler would do. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what is this? <laughs> I don't know. That just, I wish I had the clip, but it was, it was, I was like, this is Tyler. This is, <laughs> this is his reaction. This is exactly the same kind of cadence and uh, the way he speaks. This is how he, oh, is that right? this is how he reacts when we uh, accuse him of something yeah. or question him on something. That, yeah. Yeah. Catch him in a lie. You're getting, <laughs> catching him that, in act, a lie. that actor played that part perfectly too, by the way. Yeah. The uppity, uppity sort of upper crust freaking psychiatrist or whatever. I have the clip right here. Boom, yes. <laughs> boom, boom, yes. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> yeah. Do you find it hard to hide the fact that you're gay? What are you, what are you, what are you talking about? What? Look, buddy, <laughs> two seconds ago you were ready to give me a jump. A jump? Are you? <laughs> I'm terribly sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> hey, look, I don't have a problem with it. I don't care if you putt from the rough. What are you to putt? Putting from the rock. <laughs> that, exa- that exactly. <laughs> that exactly. The perfect. R- repeating. What <laughs> like the put, 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 put from the rock? Yeah. Oh my god. I don't mean to disappoint you, my dear man, but <laughs> put, put, put from the rough. <laughs> I just found Tyler's spirit animal. Yeah. <laughs> did you see? Did you think that when you saw that scene? I did not. I just. I really enjoyed his reaction, but yeah. I didn't put two and two together till just now. But yeah. I was watching with Deanna. I was like, "That's exactly how it would. How he would do it." Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. That's how he based his whole personality off of this guy, this therapist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. My God. That yeah. that therapist is so fucking annoying. Yeah, he was. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, my hero, yeah. Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. I liked him. I liked the 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 second therapist was like more of a homeopathic guru, holistic. Sort of. Yeah, I tried I to hypnotize. Yeah, hypnotizer. Hypnotizer. I'm a hypnotizer. <laughs> yeah, I'm a hypnotist. Yeah. I'm trying to think of any of the other interesting scenes that kind of stuck out to me. I like the the bar scene's pretty iconic. Yeah, I um, like that in Jay and Silent Bob. They got all of the same actors. Yeah. To remake that scene for oh, the what really the sequel yeah, the Good fake Will, sequel Good to Hunting Two they just like even more over the top Boston accents <laughs> and then the whole where the how you like them apples comes from yeah that's a great one like in that bar, in the bar scene like I if the the cadence of Matt Damon's like delivery and his lines was just really impressive because he was taught he was talking 
kind of fast, but not fast in a way where you couldn't understand him. But he, I don't know. It was just like some, it, it was some, it was kind of satisfying to it see is. him browbeat this guy. Yeah. It was, it was very good casting too for the guy who's getting humiliated because right. you just look at him and you're like, oh, that's a fucking, that's a real douchebag right yeah. there. That, guy, that guy's a tool. I, I He's got mean, a blonde ponytail. It's funny. Michael Bolton. Like, yeah. we, <laughs> Why do I got to change my name? He's the one that sucks. <laughs> and like, it, like they both just play the roles perfectly because we've all known that person who like kind of like knows something a little bit more than the average person. And then they use that to <clears throat> take advantage to pick up women or, mm. you know, get some sort of social status, some elated social status. Mm. So it, but so they just play it like really naturally i like the part of life where you have somebody who knows i know a lot about movies compared to the average person sure but like somebody like joe bridges i know nothing compared to him mm. so if like we were to have, be having a conversation and we're talking with somebody about movie, yeah, that joe bridges yeah he's, <laughs> he's in the chat i don't know if he's still there but i mean it's he's he is a what i would consider like an, an expert in film ah. i'm i am an enthusiast yeah <laughs> but if you talk to a person that watches you know six movies a year, you know, maybe one in theater. Yeah, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and Joe, Joe says in the chat, I don't know about that. He would probably proclaim he has no, he's not an authority whatsoever because there's p- tiers, three, four tiers above him too. Right. So the... You have this gift, Joe Bridges. <laughs> don't squander it. <laughs> don't cover your light, child. <laughs> he's um, the will hunting of the cinematic world. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, what's going to say, you know, when you have, you're trying to like flex and you have this, the, with the Dunning Kruger effect, you know, mm-hmm. you over, over, overcompensate or over. Uh, the Dunning Kruger like a uh, poster syndrome kind of. Kind of, but it's the opposite. You know you, a lot about, or you don't know a lot about something. And you think you know a lot. And you yeah. portray that you do. That's the blonde ponytail guy. And then a real smarty comes up and says, <laughs> you know, you're just fucking regurgitating this, you know. Yeah. Um, I bet you read that in this book. Yeah, page yeah. eight. Ever heard of it? <laughs> I, I know that photographic memory is a real thing, but it just seems so fake. It seems like it's not real. It It, it is. I know there's human beings that do have photographic memory, but it just seems like it's impossible. I've read about it. And there's people who don't have an inner monologue. Well, like people like people who don't. I don't. Like people who, yes, do, you do. who no. don't. Yes, you do. Do you have a voice in your head? You no. don't have a voice in your head? No. You're just walking around this world in me silence? And, me and Brianna have had this conversation many times. It's one of the th- reasons why she thinks I might be a sociopath, and I don't uh, think the way you so- said that. I don't think you're. A, I don't think you're a sociopath, but <laughs> it's a. It's a no, you, you you don't think to yourself. I think in feelings, in like colors. So like when you're working, say you're you're like it typing goes in the square like, hole. <laughs> you're you're, ty- you're you're typing along. You're writing an email. You're not reading it to yourself in your head. No. What? No, I like when I think of thoughts. <laughs> it's more like a feeling like i feel this is right use your brain <laughs> i use i use a weird yeah okay justice that, is the same way justice says he doesn't have an in monologue either and brianna hates it well it's hard to in a house with two men that don't it's, <laughs> have a conscience or something hard, hard to no, it's not that. i mean it's a it's a more common than i guess than so. not but it's, I, just, it's just hard for i guess for people with a voice in their head uh-huh. to imagine what that would be like because yeah, they yeah. imagine it's like, is it nothing it's like thinking what blind people see mm-hmm. it's like, is it just black what do blind so, yeah well what do, what do blind people dream about that's my question i don't know but, um, blind at birth real blinds I not the fake blinds that got blinded like boy kills world like I th- daredevil i yeah. think <laughs> so i think that i think the tragedy of will hunting though is because i've read up on photographic memory and it's like they, people think it's like a straight up curse because you think like you remember everything Mm -hmm. and that means like all the really bad emotional trauma shit that you go through. That's that's an interesting point. I don't know if you can see that though. Like a photographic memory is based off of your vision. Does it also work with emotions? I don't think it, I mean, no, you're aware of like those memories because you know me, like I forget stuff all the time, Mm -hmm. but for someone like Will Hunting, he remembers every cigarette that's been burnt out on him and mm-hmm. when he's gotten stabbed, when he's been heartbroken. But he said he doesn't have a photographic memory. Maybe. Well, his ex- his explanation of it is the best explanation of like the Mozart thing. Yeah. It's like they're just more apt to learning this thing quickly 
and that's the thing that he mm. is good at is yeah. just learning things. He doesn't know how or why. I can't explain it. Yeah. Yeah. He just does it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, okay. my, I think Brianna has a photographic memory because she still for emotions, because she still brings up shit that I said six years ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, is that why you said that? Blah 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 blah. There are certain things. I'm just like, that, what? That time that you killed me in Risk and I told you not to. I'm like, what? <laughs> Seven That's years called ago. a grudge. Yeah. yeah, she's got a photographic grudge. <laughs> I thought Ben Affleck's character had flashes of brilliance, but it was kind of annoying most of the time. Who? Which one? Uh, ben Affleck's character. He oh, he's was supposed the, to be the, the best friend. He's supposed to be annoying. But there what was happened some... to his teeth? He he's he had a tooth glow up since this movie. Right. He either got veneers or braces or something because those teeth are all kind of spread out like toes. Yeah. <laughs> like toes on a foot. I think, it, well, yeah, he probably got some adjustments or something. I don't know. The, the, the rumor about this movie, too, is that Ben Affleck kind of just rode the coattails of Matt Damon and he was didn't barely participate. Really? Bar- barely wrote the script. He was like the guy in the class project that was yeah. barely there. Yeah. And he just kind of made it in and his screen presence was enough to and the name being attached to mm-hmm. the uh, you know to the writing credits in the to movie to shoot him up into the yeah to basically make him more more or less a household name because yeah. we have da, 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 let's see here good best picture Lawrence Bender who the fuck is that oh that's the producer mm-hmm. best picture this one best picture oh uh, sorry nominated for best picture nominated for best actor Matt Damon Robin Williams did win best supporting actor Mini Driver was nominated for best actress in a supporting role Gus Van Sant nominated for best director I don't. I don't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Just because of that fucking slow mo. There was a number of things. I mean, it wasn't bad, but there was a couple of like weird, like thing, yeah, weird oddball choice. things yeah, weird in certain scenes that I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. The pacing was good, and I think that some of the sound usage, music usage was good. Oh, the Elliot Smith soundtrack. Oh yeah, I was gonna say there's a bunch of Elliot Smith in this. <clears throat> also, the score, Danny Elfman, very whimsical. Yeah, that yeah. was surprising. Uh, Brianna quizzed me on it. I was in the kitchen making something, prepping something while the credits were rolling at the beginning. Mm-hmm. She goes, who do you think did the score? The first like minute or two of the credits kind of sounds like maybe James Horner or Hans, early Hans Zimmer before he got very like grandiose. And then as soon as I guessed James Horner, you could hear the oh, the chorus of people singing in the background and it started sounding like a uh, big fish. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, very, yeah. It, That's what Deanna said too. Yeah. I was like, it sounds like Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck both uh, nominated for Best Screenplay. um, The uh, the screenplay, the script for this movie, before when they were trying to find a studio for for the to make this movie, Mm -hmm. Matt Damon and Ben Affleck found a clever way to choose the right studio. The story goes that on page sixty of the script, they wrote a completely out of nowhere sex scene between Sean and Lambeau, Mm. (laughs) between Robin Williams and Stellan Skarsgård. They took it to every major studio and nobody even mentioned the scene. When they met with Harvey Weinstein at Miramax, he said, I only have one really big note on the script about page 60. The two professors, both straight men, have a sex scene. What the hell is that? Damon and Affleck explained that they put that scene specifically in the script to show them who actually read the script and who didn't. As Weinstein was the only person who brought it up, Miramax was the studio chosen to produce the film. Hmm. Interesting. That's that's, that's pretty clever. It was like, it's like putting the... Brown M&M's. The... Van Halen and the bottom of the of like a test. If, if you re- if you read all of the questions in the bottom of the test, then don't don't. Oh write. yeah, for step one, yeah. read all your questions before you answer a single question. Then the last one says, you know, turn the page over and yeah, draw a smiley face and turn it in for full credit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to show how many people actually read anything. That's the same same reason why Van Halen has a bowl of brown M and M's on their writer. Basically, they have a lot of very specific technical requirements for the size of their show the pyrotechnics the lighting the pure amperage that comes from the amps or voltage Mm -hmm. comes from Mm -hmm. the amps so they essentially said if they went in the green room before a show and there was no brown m&ms there they assumed that they just skimmed their rider yeah and they Mm -hmm. didn't take all those extra precautions and they're like we're not going to blow a main fuse at your venue and fuck up this concert for the entire all these people if you didn't follow the directions right the brown m&ms Rule. Yeah. <clears throat> now I'm gonna call it the gay sex will hunting rule. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting though. I like that. Yeah. And Casey Affleck ad li- ad lib most of his lines. Um, the improvised lines were much funnier and better than what had originally been written for him. Nice. I think I Casey, believe Casey, it. Casey Affleck wrote that. I think <laughs> <laughs> Casey Affleck wrote that. That's funny. He was just kind of a 
one of those characters that is, he's like a Kramer character. He's, I don't know what, what his deal is. He just kind of <coughs> is around all the time doing whatever. Yeah. You, it, I mean, knowing that he's Ben Affleck's brother, you assume he's his little brother, but he keeps saying, why do you come over to my mom's house? Yeah. I was like, are they playing brothers in real life too? <clears throat> or in this movie as well? No, they're not. No. No, I think he was just, I, I want to, well, I mean, I know he's the little brother of Ben, but I was thinking. Big Ben. <laughs> I was think I was thinking that he was like younger than the crew he was hanging out with, so he was always a baby like, of the group. And then there's Cole Hauser there. Mm-hmm. Who's Cole Hauser? He's the mechanic guy who is like the fourth of the group who has the least amount of screen oh, it's time, like Red yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. What is he playing? I know the name, but I mean I've seen him and stuff, but I can't really name anything. Do you know that Mel Gibson and Michael Mann were both slated to direct this? I do now after reading this trivia. Right oh, now. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean. For all of Mel the, Gibson. T- all the terrible things that Mel Gibson has said in recordings, which by the way, you guys, we got, we, I, I think we got to review yeah. those tapes. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of racial epithets that are on there. There is. Isn't the an- there anti-Semitic no as well? Right yeah. There that's, is. A, that's a race. I, it's, <laughs> I've, li- I've listened to an hour. Oh, that's a, a race. I listened to an hour and a half of those Mel Gibson tapes and they will... An hour and a half? You listened to the whole thing? <laughs> yes. On repeat? In my you could be watching new movies, Tyler. <laughs> Fuck, man. Come on. Live a little. I'm, I'm try- I am I'm, living. I'm try- <laughs> I don't, even, don't hold me back, Dad. I'm just trying to let you uh, shine your light, boy. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, no, Mel. I mean, Mel Gibson's a gr- is a, is a really good director. I think he I think he could have done really well with Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> Matt Damon joins the small group of people who have been nominated for Oscars for both writing and acting in the same year with Charlie uh, Charlie Chaplin for The Great Dictator, Orson Welles for Citizen Kane, and Sylvester Stallone for Rocky. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't know Sylvester. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, Rocky was his project that got him out of poverty. Yeah. Interesting. It's also listed on number 83 in IMDb's top 250 movies of all time, just below Princess Mononoke. And let's see, what did it, what did it beat? It beat Singing in the Rain. That was a few up there. Come and See, Requiem for a Dream, Toy Story 3, Return of the Jedi. Uh, but it was beat by Sunset Boulevard, Aliens, The Shining, The Great Dictator, Inglorious Bastards, and The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, hmm. that that tracks. Dark Knight Rises should be way lower in this list. I, I, Eight point four. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Like the the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Should be lower on that list. Yeah, um, it should be on the list. I was, uh, you know what? Just I got that death scene alone. I kind of. <laughs> I heard. I heard that the someone said. I don't. This is complete anecdotal. That the there was like a food poisoning on set and like a bunch of the cast and crew got dysentery. Oh no. <laughs> and they basically could only do one shot with Mary and Cotillard for that scene. And they're just like, all right, we're going to run with it. That's oh, okay. it. Why? Cause what did she have food she, poisoning? Yeah. She had to go shit her brains out. After yeah. that. I got to die. Go, <laughs> and then <laughs> of all the excuses, I believe it because who would say that's the excuse. Yeah. I had to go shit my pants. This <laughs> so is like yeah. a real Titanic PCP situation. <laughs> Well, it's kind of like oh, in, yeah. it's kind of like in Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, where Harrison Ford got dysentery, and that's the reason why we get that iconic shot. With the sh- it. He shoots the gun, yeah, where he just shoots the gun and then he walks away because he was so sick out of his mind. Yeah, but I think uh, what was I going to say? Dang, I <laughs> you're saying this movie's mid, dang, C plus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> it, <laughs> it sucks. No, it's good. It's like fine. I, it's 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 yeah. It's, it's a movie. It, it's a movie. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. I never remember what I was gonna say. I kind of started getting, a movie. I started. I started <laughs> kind of choking up a little bit because I remembered that Robin Robin Williams isn't with us now. So that sucks because he's he was so good. He was so good. He and like somehow like I feel like he was like playing himself in certain scenes mm. and. I don't know. Maybe like, that's why he connected so well with the role. You know, kind of a sad, tortured past. Yeah, yeah. I think I think so. So you know, all, all, all I have to you know, the only thing I just wanted to kind of add to the conversation was all the kind of argument, the discussion about should we push Will into this role or should we not? Blah blah blah, that sort mm-hmm. of thing. You know, he was giving just as much shit back to Sean, the therapist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Later on in their relationship, once they've actually kind of garnered a great relationship together, he, yeah. he was giving shit back to him because he's like, oh, so great. Your your wife died and now you have a past to give up. 
because yeah. he's give, telling him the same thing. He's yeah, like, oh, you haven't, yeah. you haven't even tried. You know, at least I played my hand. I lost, but I played my hand. Yeah. He goes, we'll play another fucking hand. Quit crying and crying about it. At first, I was like, man, what a dickhead. Yeah. But ultimately, he brought him out of his shell. He brought yeah. Sean out of his shell, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to go back to teaching again, or I'm going to go back to do whatever it was. Traveling. Like Traveling, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to tr- you know, open myself up for it again, because you're right. Yeah, I played my hand, and I lost, but I still got a whole life ahead of me. Right. And it's, yeah, the ending for Will is like, he takes the job at first, but mm-hmm. then he's like, I'm going to, he gets the car as a gift, the yeah. sh- shitty car, yeah. and then <laughs> and then he just leaves the job, and he just goes to California to be with Mini Driver. Yep. I I remember I don't remember that part. I remember <laughs> my in my, my mind's eye that he took the job and got the good job and that was the ending and that was a happy ending. Yeah. But still was a happy ending because he's pursuing something else. Yeah. yeah. But maybe he can do both. Shit, maybe maybe he can work remote. Yeah. Work from home. I think I've, <laughs> internet wasn't so great in nineteen ninety seven, but it was funny home. how Ben Affleck was able to convince these executives to like <laughs> give him like, seventy three. We're, like, we're bucks. offering you a job. Yeah, but I could use three hundred dollars right but now. I have three hundred dollars in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> He's, I think he said like something like along the lines of, "Oh, I need a three thousand dollar retainer." Yeah. Oh, yeah, retainer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's and he's his, his yeah his schmuckery in that in that boardroom was so yeah. ridiculous. You know, it's and it's interesting because it, that that scene could have been completely like cut I out. I don't remember movie. that scene at all. Yeah. <clears throat> Quick note on that shitty car. It's a Nova, early seventies Nova, hmm. and the they did something I really appreciated in movies with cars. Uh, they'll talk about a specific specific part of a car. They'll mm-hmm. be like in like in Transformers, you know. They're like, "Oh, you got a high rise double pump carburetor," and they open the fucking hood, and it's not that. It's like oh, yeah. it's a Stromberg side draft or something yeah. like that. It's like comes comes something completely different. Yeah, it's like why. Like, why bring out the specifics of it and then open the hood and show something opposite? That's not that. Because, some, yeah, someone, they yeah. didn't have somebody on set that could verify that that's what they're talking about. They just kind of threw some jargon out there. Yeah. yeah. They probably wrote it in the script and then just left it in the script for the final filming because, oh, that sounds good. Mm-hmm. And he asks the guy, <clears throat> he goes, Oh, what do you got in there? Stray six? And they open the hood and there's fucking Stray six. <laughs> I was like, Oh, shit, there's a Stray six in that. I don't know if they had those in Novas in the, in the 70s, but. I couldn't tell you, but I mean, straight six is a Chevy motor. So yeah, I was, I was very happy when that that opened, a line, it matched. Yeah. A, a lot of motors you could look at and you couldn't tell if it's a, you know, like a 454 or, you know, whatever, a 305. Yeah. I could tell that I could tell you that's a 305 is not a 454, but I, I couldn't look at a 305 and said, you know, name that motor, but a straight six is a very iconic, very n- notable looking engine. Cause it's a long, thin block. Yeah. straight six because there's six cylinders in a row instead of a v configuration yeah so it's just a fucking long engine and you open it up and the valve cover is fucking long and you're like oh wow <laughs> they did it <laughs> the uh i mean i assume that the writers the writers of of movies are you know they're not imagining like this is a, a mechanics movie this is going to be sure. a car mechanics movie <laughs> <laughs> the ratio of car mechanics going to see Goodwill Hunting, <laughs> or, or sure, <laughs> but I don't. I'm, you're not expecting veterans are going to go see the only audience for like Saving Private Ryan. Have some goddamn realism in your movie. Yeah, if you're going to be writing about a topic you don't know about, just get an expert on set. Well, but also, two, there's are like this isn't right. There's like te- there's like technical stuff like that, like engines, uh-huh. and then there's like war, which is a very could be very anecdotal. Sure, to the war experience. So one of the lines in it did not hold up because they're talking about how they afforded it. They're like, yeah, I bought, I bought some of the pots and we all put it together. And you're like, those are the same. It's not, it's not, it's not a piece mailed car. It's all the same color. <laughs> that patina, you can't, you can't match that patina from car, patina. car to car. You know, if the fenders were blue and the, and the quarter panels were red and the <laughs> doors were black, I would say, okay, that makes sense. But again, that was Casey Affleck said that probably improv line. Mm-hmm. He just oh, made it up. He made it up. Fucking yep. idiot. <laughs> um, Anything else you guys want to talk about? Uh, no, not really. No, we talked about the ending. And uh, oh, could be added to a, a great final lines in movies. Son of a bitch stole my line. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got to go see about a girl. Yeah. Great story, by the way, when he's talking about the World Series. Oh, oh yeah. that was. And really he's like, I don't know. Story. I was, I was in the bar. And and he was having a beer with my future wife. Yeah. Great line. Oh, the, and the whole conversation about regrets. Yeah. 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 That was no regrets. <laughs> no, no regrets. Yeah. Yeah, I got her, got her name tattooed on me. No regrets. 
So anyways, yeah, that's everything I want to say. You guys want to put grades on this thing? Yeah. Tyler? Uh, C plus, yeah. Still C plus? Yeah. It's, 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 what it's do you a, not like about it? Because um, all we've talked about is all I the good, I cool scenes. And, well, yeah, I mean, what I don't like about it is the concept of the story. Just like this like genius who is living in squander and is traumatized. <laughs> Interesting. Because I, I, I'm living in squander and I'm not a genius. <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell I me wish what, I was uh, a genius. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> why can't I be a genius? That's Mono! A, that's exactly. <laughs> that's exactly. Mono what, strikes again. <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking while I'm watching Honestly, this you're movie. jealous. <laughs> yeah, I guess I, yeah, it was jealous. No, no, but really, it's just like that story doesn't, God damn it, that story just, it doesn't, it doesn't grab me as much as like other stories does. However, like it brings it back with the great acting of Robin Williams and Matt Damon and Skarsgård as well. And to a lesser extent, Mini Driver, but, and I think, and I really like Gus Van Sant's work in I think he had, like Pete was saying, there's some there were some odd choices made, but it's it was easy to overlook them, for myself at least, and I think uh, yeah, it it deserves all the praise that it gets, but it just not mine though. I just I was just praising it. I'm just saying like the reason why it deserves everything. It the re- classic movie, contemporary the, classic, all the Oscars. C plus. <laughs> Deserves it all. It's mid. <laughs> all right. Anything else? Oh, no, that's it. <clears throat> all right, Joseph. What's what do you grade to Good Will Hunting? Solid A. Cool. Solid A. Good acting from everybody. Good emotional storyline. I like the sort of kind of semi quick witted dialogue in some scenes and Robin Williams' character. Both Robin Williams and Will Ding or Matt Damon's character both had good backstories that you know you don't need to know everything about but you're just given enough mm-hmm. to sympathize with both of them and understand how they could be good heads to collide i guess mm-hmm. <laughs> i love that we uh, the line from casey affleck and my boys wicked smart is in this <laughs> <laughs> love that that is in the movie and it's only said once yeah not overdone and uh, yeah it's a good movie surprised it's good <laughs> nice beautiful but, yeah i'm gonna echo that i'm an easy a yeah solid solid a movie there were times when I was thinking, this is a perfect movie. And then I'd see a shitty edit. I'm like, eh, okay, A. <laughs> Not A+. plus. The, the dialogue is just very, it doesn't seem pretentious, you know? Right. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, it just feels like, it's almost like the movie's giving you life lessons along the way as you're watching it. Mm-hmm. And, and you could watch it in the form of entertainment, or you can watch it in the form of enrichment. You can also just watch it and say, I want a good cry. I'm yeah. going to let these characters into my heart again, watch this again and try to have fresh eyes. And I'm, when, when he gets to the, it's not your fault scene, just break down again. Yeah. So I think that scene is a good tear jerk moment. The scene in the, the dorm of her dorm, when, she, when they have their first blow up, <clears throat> it's uh very emotional. Yeah. That one hit me. And, and a lesser movie probably would have allowed, you know, will to, cave and kind of go back to her quicker yeah but it really lingers like he calls her on the phone and she's she says i love you and he's, he's like, okay i'll talk to you soon yeah You're like fuck what a dick dude mm-hmm. yeah you cut this like, this smoke show this is like mini driver on yeah she's hand. a harvard she's from london she's she's rich she's a har- she's british she's gonna be a harvard graduate she's smart as shit she's gonna be a surgeon yeah i don't know actually might that might not work no it's awesome i mean all these things and then he just runs away from it so it's like you're watching and you're like don't do the thing guy don't what are you doing and so when he actually comes around and the finale happens, and it's just really satisfying, really satisfying. And God damn us for not having Robin Williams on this earth anymore. I <clears throat> know. Sad, sad state of affairs. So A for me, A from Joseph, C plus from Tyler. <laughs> now it's time for the Wheel of Destiny. One wheel, eight slots, three hosts. This is the Wheel of Destiny. All 
All right, Goodwill Hunting off the wheel. Replacement. Yeah, I'm going to replace it with a movie I saw a long time ago, and I thought it was terrible. Oh. And I think it's... A long a, time ago. Yeah, Maybe well... Years ago? Probably five, six years ago when it first came out. Oh. Five, six years ago. Yeah, I don't remember much about this movie except for that Paul Rudd was in it. And well, what is it? <laughs> what is it? Tell me. Just wait. I'll tell you in a second. I'm, I'm erasing it from the board. Come on. Um, <clears throat> Paul and I think, Rudd. I think it was a Netflix original. It's a sci-fi kind of futuristic movie called Mute. Oh. It's about another character who doesn't have a voice, just like Skarsgård from Boy Kills World. Mm-hmm. I think it's Aaron Eckhart or... Aaron Eckhart. <clears throat> Can you look it up for me? Mute. 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 2018 Alexander Skarsgård. So five years ago. It is Alexander Skarsgård? Alexander Skarsgård. Okay, perfect. So, Duncan Jones. So yeah, the most beloved David Bowie's son. Uh, <clears throat> Director of Moon. Yes, and the Warcraft movie. <laughs> One of Tyler's mom's favorites. Justin Thoreau is in this as well. Yeah, there's a, a stacked cast. I remember watching it and going, man, this has everything in it and it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it has everything, everyone in it and it sucks. Yeah, it's like it has everything that I want in a movie and then it, it blows. Okay. Damn. I want to say it's a Netflix original, so. I'm pretty sure it is. Okay. Uh, Joe Bridges says he w- fell asleep during Mute and never finished it. <clears throat> well, now's the time. Whenever it lands on it. All right, let's recap what we have on the wheel. What was the last movie we did? Oh, Charade. Charade, yeah. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so no one is going to get vetoed this week. It's oh, yeah? You're, you're busting off. No, I'm saying like we everybody's everybody's movies are still up to uh, review. There isn't a, a two, oh, two in a row? Yeah. No. No, no, no. Okay, so I have Mute from Pete, The Brave Little Toaster from Pete, Mr. and Mrs. Smith from Tyler, American History X from Tyler, Oppenheimer from Joseph, Notting Hill from Joseph, a very long engage- engagement from Binge Lord Dan and Fern Gully from Mackenzie Minor. Mm. Is that still the last name? Yes. Okay. Tyler, will it be you? Will it be Tyler? And then one of the things that happened on last week, when uh, I listened to old ones, is we did the running wheel. So we're going to give this a spin. Here we go for next week. What's it going to be? It's not going to be mine. I swear it isn't. Mm. Oh my gosh, Mr. Mrs. Smith. Yeah. Awesome. This is where, this is uh, the movie that ended Brad Pitt and Andrew, Jennifer Aniston's relationship. Oh, because he was banging, he was stooping, uh, yeah. what's her name, <laughs> Angelina Jolie. Yeah. So why this movie? Well, I remember enjoying it a lot and thinking it was a very unique action movie. And I thought the the chemistry between Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie was just palpable. Like it, it palpable, palpable. Yeah. And it was just, <laughs> 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 and so, we're, so who was, who was Angelina Jolie dating at the time? Because apparently, they were, apparently yeah. they were fooling around on their spouses. No, that, that, that was, that was like the kind of like unspoken secret. Like what? Like they, they, they were banging. Okay. And so it, <laughs> but anyways, I think that's like gossip that, girls writing in right now. She's drafting her email. That, that's what I really like about the, I mean, it's an, it's unfortunate that it ruined two marriages, but I it's think right, we got too many marriages nowadays. I think, <laughs> I think them being like romantically involved, like really like made them feel more charismatic on screen. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, and I think I think I I haven't seen this movie in a while, so I've never I'm seen just, this movie. I'm just going off based off of memory, but the action scenes were good. There was a lot of good shootout scenes, and the story's kind of unique. It's like oh a, shit, they just remade a series with Donald Glover. Yeah, I was just yeah, gonna say so we're gonna watch this and the Donald Glover series. And uh, Joe Bridges yeah. says there's a 1941 Hitchcock version too. Really? Yeah. Wow. So the one that we're watching is Pitt and Jolie. Oh, yes. Doug Lyman. It's it's streaming on Netflix and Hulu. Mm-hmm. So cool. Should be easy for everybody to watch. Wow. I Director can't wait. of Finally. Swingers and r- the new Roadhouse. I like Lyman. He makes fun movies. All right. Well, that's a. I like him better than Gus Van Sant. I'll say that much. <laughs> but, <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you didn't like Last Days. I haven't seen Last Days. Oh. Wait, isn't or Paranoia Park or Elephant? Last Days is that the you did you haven't la- is that the John Lennon. 
No, movie? no, no. That that's chapter. Oh, okay. Twenty eight. What's something. last days? I'm not gonna watch. Last that days is the Kurt Cobain. Oh, that movie. One. Yeah, and yeah. then no. I Paranoid like, Park I don't like is music docs. Paranoid. It's not a music doc. It's just I don't any, like music biopics. Paranoid Park is good. You really <laughs> I don't like anything? You should nope. really check it out. <laughs> I like Gus Van Sant. Wait, I don't like Gus Van Sant. <laughs> Elephants. Good. I like Doug Liman. <laughs> Elephants good too. God, my God. Born Identity director as well. Yeah, Doug Lime is good. Yeah. Jumper. <laughs> Jumper! <laughs> Great. Awesome. I can finally. It's my favorite Lyman pick. <laughs> I get to finally host an episode. All right. You start practicing now for the intro because I fucked up this one. Yeah. I'll have to start practicing. All right. Anything else, guys? No. That's no. It. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to the cool ass yard duties over on Patreon. That's Javier, Heather Sachs, Ryan Corbin, and Chris. And thank you to Joe Bridges in the chat for the second half and uh, Eric and Bruce in the first half. We really appreciate you guys. Oh, Joe Bridges does say the Jolie Red red Wiley boots or Red Welly boots from the movie became a cultural ty- hype thing when uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith came out. Mm. I'll keep an eye out for that. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't either. Um, I assume boots of some kind. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Until next time. Thank you for joining the live stream and the podcast stream. And as we review, what was it? Good Will Hunting. I yes. already forgot. <laughs> Falls next week. We watch <laughs> 05's Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Hulu and Netflix. And uh, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash podcast, And send us an email, mcfcpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, and follow us on Instagram at Middle Class Film Class and leave us a voicemail, why don't you? At 209-730-6010. And follow us on Twitter at Podcast MCFC and on TikTok at Middle Class Film Class. All right. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube page. It means a lot if you do. Thanks for listening. Class dismissed. I gotta get out of here. The bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you. You are free to go. See you next week. See you later. See you later. That's a wrap. Great show.